All right, how's it going? Well, to family, once again, here, Rosendo Rodriguez, Fly Duck 16, here at South Coast Welding Academy in Houston, Texas. Now, check this out. I know you heard of it, or maybe someone told you about it. That's right, Tip Tig. So, on today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do some Tip Tig on a six inch schedule 80. All right, so it's a hybrid. It's a mixture between MIG and TIG together. So we're gonna put it to a test. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're gonna be using this sugar scoop from WellTube with this flip adapter, all right? So make sure that you check them out online. Remember, it's weltlife.com. Use my discount code, FlyDuck16, for that 10% off on your purchase. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be welding on a six inch schedule 80 pipe. All right, we have that over there at the table. It's already clean for us and everything. Now look, check this out. Looks a little intimidating, right? Don't let it intimidate you, it's not that bad. So all you gotta do is simply walk the cup like a regular TIG, uh, TIG torch. Now look, you see this wire right here? This little hose on the top. Well, that's where your wire shoots. That's where your wire comes out. So. Everything is regular, like a regular TIG, uh, TIG rig. Shoots the wire for you, and all you gotta do is walk the cup. All right, now you have a couple buttons down here. The first button strikes an arc on and off. The bottom button shoots your wire on and off. Now check it out, let's do it. See that? So it's gonna strike an arc. Whenever you're ready to weld, just walk the cup. The bottom button is gonna shoot our wire. Check it out, on and off, boom. So you stop it whenever you want, just like MIG. Remember, same, same MIG wire we're using is 0.035 70S6. That's what we're gonna be welding with, all right? So it looks a little bulky. Don't let it intimidate you. Just walk it normal, right? Now come over here real quick. So see our box right here? It's our suitcase, right? So just like MIG. So this is what's gonna uh, this is our wire speed right here. So all we got to do is, is change our wire speed. I'm going to give you our wire speed later on, but this is how you change your wire speed. And then your Dynasty, of course, your Dynasty 350. That's your amperage. All right, so look at this. Big old hose. Everything looks very similar to MIG, all right? It's a hybrid between MIG and TIG. So let's put it to the test, all right? Let's see how it goes. Make sure that you have... Make sure you have a good uh, 332 landing, maybe like a nickel to a 332 landing. Uh, make sure you clean the inside, the outside, your walls, and so on. Nice and clean. Remember, we're dealing with TIG. So nice and clean. All right, so we're going to put a 332 gap. So we're going to open this put our spacer in between. We want a good 332 gap, just like that. You know, the good thing about tip tig is that you can have a really tight gap. Tight gap, uh, you increase your amperage, your wire speed. You're not gonna have a problem with, uh, you know, with blowing through and all that, not being able to feed that that keyhole. So, so it has its, its, its advantages, you know? All right, so we have a 332 gap, nice and even all the way around. Now we're gonna do four tacks. We're gonna put one on top, one on the bottom, and one on each side. All right, so come over here real quick. Now we're gonna set up our wire speed on this suitcase. Now it's very simple. All we have to do is change this knob, right? Turn it to our, our uh, proper wire speed. So our wire speed is gonna be at 28. So all you gotta do is find it, turn it until you get to 28. That simple, it's just like MIG. So it's gonna be at 28 wire speed. And then our amperage on our Dynasty 350, all you gotta do is turn your knob and we're gonna be going at 128. You see that? Remember, uh, we're gonna do the four penetrated tacks. We're gonna do one on top, one on the bottom, and then one on each side. But look, I changed my cup. I'm gonna start with a size six cup. See that? It's a long neck. So, and the reason why is because I wanna make sure that my wire stays in the very uh, center. So I wanna make sure I can see everything, 
and it reaches all the way in there. All right, so I'm just gonna place it like this, shoot my wire, and start working my way up. I'm going uphill just like that. See how it rolls really nicely because I'm using a size six. If you put a size 10, something larger, you're not gonna be able to wiggle it. All right, you're gonna be going all over, all over the place if you're not careful. So it's easier, it's easier to use a size six, but you don't have to if you don't want to. All right, so now we already did one tack. Let's go ahead and do the other tack real quick. Oh, right over here. All right, here we go. Now check out the wire. Look how that wire shoots. Shoots really, really fast. All I'm doing right now is just wiggling it. Back and forth, back and forth. Nice and slow, nice and steady. All the way through. Breaking down your walls. All right, so now we have it nicely tacked. Four penetrated tacks. Uh, we're on the rollout. Now we're about to start doing our route. But we gotta feather our tacks. Make sure that you grind down your tacks, feather them. You can feather them all at once, or you can do them as you're going, as you're doing your route. Doesn't matter which way you do, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start doing our route, and then we're gonna strike an arc right where we started feathering from, right where we started grinding from. Here it goes. All I'm doing is going back and forth following my puddle nice and tight if you hear that sound kind of like a tattoo machine that's what you want to hear the whole time Take your time, you don't want to rush anything here. Keep going, keep going, that's my tie-in. Stop your wire, boom. Always, always check your gap. If your gap is closing on you, remember you got to go a little bit hotter. If your gap gets larger, you got to go colder. Check it out. It's back and forth, back and forth. Nice and steady. Also, make sure that you have a good landing. You, have one, you want to have an even landing all the way around. If you put uh, too much of a small landing, it's going to keyhole on you too much. Tie in right here. Stop my wire, boom. All right, so we're gonna do our hot pass. On our hot pass, what I did, I changed my cup size. I'm using a 10 now because I'm coming out this way uh, to surface. So uh, I have a larger size cup and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth for a hot pass. I increase my wire speed and my amperage. So my wire speed right now is gonna be at 30, and then my amperage is gonna be at 180. Now all we're doing is wiggling it back and forth. All right, so now after we did our hot pass, now we can do our fill and our cap. Now, it's gonna fill up really fast. So now, since we're doing our fill, we're gonna crank up our temperature to 200 amps, and our wire speed is gonna be at 48. 
But remember, uh, depending on, on the welder, depending on your, uh, on your speed, you might have to change your wire speed, your temperature. You gotta know how to control it. So it requires a little bit of practice, all right? So let's go ahead and start doing our fills. We're gonna flush it out and then cap it. Remember, 200 amps and 48 wire speed. All right, all I'm doing is going back and forth. Make sure that you're watching your opponent hit the walls. Going back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to rush it. Sometimes you got to pause a little bit longer on the walls because you're waiting for that puddle to build up. One uh, very important thing that you got to note here is that you don't want to apply too much pressure. You don't want to put too much pressure on your on your TIG rig. TIG torch. All I'm doing is watching my puddle. That's all I'm doing. check this out so right now we're working on our last fill so just take your time watch your puddle build up watch it hit the walls back and forth back and forth back and forth all the way through all right so uh we did our, our fill we're done with our fill but if you can see our fill is a little bit under flush so maybe about a 16 is under flush, but that's okay. So we're going to cap it like that. And the reason why is because we're doing tip tape. Remember, so it's kind of like make, so it shoots a lot of wire. And if you're not careful, you're going to overdo your cap. All right, so you don't want no more than an eighth of reinforcement on your cap. Remember that. So we're going to cap it, a 16 is under flush, and we're going to do uh, a single bead cap. Now, you can also do a 2B cap, whichever one you want. Check with your, with your code, all right? Uh, see what, what they want, either a single cap or a 2B cap, all right? So our bevel to bevel is not too wide. We're gonna go ahead and do a single B cap. Remember our cap, uh, we're gonna go at 200, 200 amps. All the way through. Same thing as our fill. Now, if you ever, say you're doing your fill, if you ever overfill your, your fill, uh, you can always grind down your fill, make sure it's flush, or uh, adjust your wire speed and your temperature. Bring down your wire speed and your voltage, so that way you don't have too much, uh, too much wire. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there we have it. We got a good friend over there, Isaac. <laughs> woo <-hoo! laughs> All right, so we just finished our 16 Schedule 80 pipe on a rollout using our only friend, one and only, Tip Tig, right over there. All right, so it can be a challenge, but don't worry, just practice, all right? It's not that bad. It's a little intimidating, right? But look at this, came out really nice, all right? So it can be done. So, ladies and gentlemen, easy process. Go ahead and give it a shot. Also, do not forget, all right, help defeat childhood cancer. Please donate. Please donate. Also, don't forget, check out our website, welllife.com, all right? Use my discount code, 10% off, FlyDuck16. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Stand by for next time.